Before I get into the review, I just want to say that I'm still having the same issue with the PlayStation 3 footage that I had when I reviewed GT5 and 6. Ferrari Challenge isn't a PlayStation 3 exclusive, but the best version of the game by far is on the PlayStation 3. And that is why that is the chosen console for this review. This is also the last PlayStation 3 game that I have currently planned to do a review of, so this shouldn't be an ongoing issue anymore. Also the footage is a little bit dark, so I have tried to edit it so it looks like it's going straight from the PlayStation 3 to the TV via HDMI. Over the past 20 years or so, there have been quite a few Ferrari video games. You had F355 Challenge on the Sega Dreamcast, Ferrari The Race Experience on the PlayStation 3, and Test Drive Ferrari Racing Legends on the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and PC. But the one that I'm going to talk about today is probably the most famous one of them all, Ferrari Challenge Trofeo Pirelli, which I will just be calling Ferrari Challenge for the rest of this review. Ferrari Challenge was released on the PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, Nintendo Wii, and the DS worldwide in 2008, but it was also released in South Korea on the Wii in 2013, five years after its initial release everywhere else. As I said at the beginning of the video, I'm reviewing it on the PlayStation 3. The game was developed by Eutechnics, who didn't have the best reputation for making racing games, and it was published by Systems 3 which had a reputation for publishing and developing not so good games. So straight away, things don't really look good for Ferrari Challenge. What I want to know is, why did Ferrari agree to have an officially licensed game to be developed and published by two companies that were known for shovelware and games that did terribly critically? When you start the game, you have to create a team name and select what country your team is based in. This isn't that different to what you have to do in other racing games, but in Ferrari Challenge, you can select North Korea as the country that your team is based in. So that was the obvious choice. Just like every other racing game, it is best to do the tutorial first. In the tutorial, you have to drive a Ferrari F430 around the Fiorano test track. You have Tiff Nadell from 5th gear and old top gear as your racing instructor. It's good braking, but carrying good speed into the corner. Looking back at the game and Tiff's relationship with Ferrari, I'm surprised that Ferrari agreed to have him in the game at all, let alone as your racing instructor. When you get into the game properly, you have to start off in the challenge mode so you can unlock cars and earn money for the cars that you unlock. And you need those cars for the rest of the game. So you don't have a say in the matter when it comes to what cars to buy, only when to buy them. The races are long, and there are a lot of them. Each race is 15 minutes plus however long it takes you to finish your final lap. You have 5 minutes to qualify before the first race in the race weekend, and I recommend you actually try not to get 16th in qualifying like I did at the beginning of the challenge mode. I only really used the qualifying time to get used to the track and then realised that that was a bad idea near the end of the Italy part of the challenge mode. There are three parts slash championships in this mode. You have Italy, Europe and America. Even though for some reason Paul Ricard is in Italy when it's actually a French track so it should really be in the European championship. You unlock a car at the end of the race weekend but only if you win which I guess does make sense you have to do the whole thing again if there was a car that you didn't win and it's even worse if you didn't win one of the last events which means many more hours of driving just so you have the ability to buy one car you also don't have a say in what car to drive in the challenge mode either the only car that you have unlocked from the beginning is the Ferrari F430 Challenge. It would have been nice if the game gave the player the ability to drive some of the older Challenge cars in this game mode, like the 348 and the 355 Challenge. I think the races are way too long. I think they should be 10 minutes, not 15. 
That is only shorter by 5 minutes, but it does add up. I wouldn't have that opinion about the challenge mode if every race weekend was on a different track as it does get a bit repetitive. The other game mode that I want to talk about is Trophy. In the Trophy game mode you are driving different cars and instead of doing two 15 minute races and having 5 minutes to qualify, you have three 10 minute races. It is all points based, so you start off at the back of the grid for the first race and then your grid position changes depending on how many points you have in the next two races. I prefer doing the trophy mode over the challenge mode as you're not driving the same car for hours on end and it takes a little while longer before you're racing on the same track again. This game mode is the reason to do the challenge mode as you win some of the nicer cars that are in the game which you can drive in the trophy mode. You may have noticed that I've been driving in the interior view and only the interior view throughout this review and the reason for that is because the game looks its best from behind the steering wheel which is another reason why I've decided to review the PlayStation 3 version and not the PlayStation 2 version of the game as that doesn't have an interior view at all. In races the outside of the cars don't look good. All of the assets look like they came from an early PlayStation 2 game. Not just the cars, but the tracks too. I'm also not really a fan of the physics either. Cars don't move right. It looks like they are slightly pivoting round corners, but you can solve that issue by going into the interior view, but then there's another issue. The game counter steers for you if you do a slight drift round a corner, and I couldn't find a way to stop that from happening. It is a little bit annoying and it does make the game a bit easier, which in most cases I hate. If I want to play a racing game, then I want a little bit of a challenge, even if it's an arcade game. Overall, the physics are terrible, even for a Eutechnics game, which really does say something. But at least the track list is alright. Ferrari Challenge has 15 tracks which I think were all included in the Ferrari Challenge racing calendar in real life in either 2007 or 2008. So there are no tracks based in Asia as Asia was introduced to the motorsport in 2011. You have tracks such as Monza, Silverstone, Homestead, Spa and Fiorano, Ferrari's factory track. So there is a good selection of tracks, not absolutely brilliant, but good. The only people to blame for there not being an absolutely brilliant selection of tracks are the race organisers as the game is supposed to be like the race series in real life. As I've just stated, the tracks don't really look that good, and I think they were taken straight from the PlayStation 2 port of the game, which is fine as it's an early PlayStation 3 game, but even then they don't look as good as the tracks in games such as Gran Turismo 4 and Toka Race Driver 3 which were both released two years before in the previous generation. But the one thing that those two games don't have is a relatively long list of Ferraris. Ferrari Challenge has 26 cars if you include DLC, I think. It is hard to find a straight answer for that online. The base game has 23 cars, which you will have to deal with if you start playing the game now as DLC is no longer available. Again, I think. The developers only included the best cars from Ferrari's history, so you're not going to find the Mondial or the 400i in the game at all, which is a shame as I do like the 400i. I am surprised that cars like the 308, 288 and the Testarossa weren't included as they are universally liked but the cars that are in the game feel like they belong in the game, except for the 348. I think the only reason why that's in the game is because there was a challenge version of it, which the game is all about. Ferrari Challenge has another game mode that I couldn't fit anywhere else in the review, so I'm going to talk about it now. This is a card game, where you have to choose either the year, top speed, weight, engine size, BHP or value of the car on your card 
and then the game will show its card. The loser has to give their card to the opponent and the winner is the one who has all of the cards in the deck. Each game can last for hours which does get quite boring and I think the game does cheat a little bit at times. Think of this game mode as top trumps and that is all that I have to say about it as I don't like the game mode at all. In a way the game does feel like shovelware and I think its description fits shovelware perfectly. An unfinished low quality game which needs an official license to sell well. I think they were going for a AAA game but the end result was far from it and Ferrari should have looked a little bit harder for a developer and publisher. But it's not as bad as critics said it was in 2008 and I am going to recommend it. But only for the PlayStation 3 as you get more cars, slightly better graphics and more features. It is a really unique game and so I think it is worth experiencing at least once which might be the only time that you would want to play it. So luckily you can get it for not much money. This has been my review of Ferrari Challenge Trofeo Pirelli for the PlayStation 3. If you liked this review then please give it a like, if you didn't then give it a dislike and if you want to see more then please consider subscribing and joining the Discord server linked in the description. Goodbye.